tour the cruise ports, the middle rider. Table of Contents, Part 4 The Middle Ryan All about the Middle Ryan With visiting and touring information Geography History Attractions And author points of interest Dr. Sidney Socloft Dr. Sidney 22 at gmail.com 2022 Narration by Dr. Sidney Socloft Zoe Phonemes and Nathan Cole Tove. For a more complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to this video using the link here. The Middle Ryan. This shows the various regions of the Rhine. The Middle Rhine is one of four sections High Rhine, Upper Rhine, Middle Rhine, Lower Rhine of the river between Lake Constance and the North Sea. The Middle Rhine extends from Bingen at kilometers 530 to Bonn at kilometers 660. The upper half of the Middle Rhine, Rhine Gorge from Bingen, Rhine kilometer 526 to Koblenz, Rhine kilometer 593 is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Since 2002, with more than 40 castles and fortresses from the Middle Ages and many wine villages. The lower half from Koblenz, Rhine kilometer 593, to Bonn, Rhine kilometer 655, is famous for the formerly volcanic Zirbengebirge, with the Drachenfels volcano. Both parts together are known as the Romantic Rhine. In the Roman Ages, the Rhine River was the eastern border of the empire, and the Romans constructed a long paved valley road along the western bank of the river. During the medieval ages, the Rhine River continued to form a vital route for transportation, and most of the castles were built throughout the 12th and 14th centuries to serve as customs control over trade. It is in the Middle Rhine, Middle Rhine, region of the river that is the most scenic and visited. The castles and vineyards and the Lorelei of the Rhine Gorge in this region is what most people think of when contemplating a cruise on the Rhine. In particular, it is the relatively small region of the Rhine called the Upper Middle Rhine from Bingen downstream to the confluence of the Moselle at Koblenz that most of the day trips on the Rhine are concentrated. Between Bingen and Bonn, the Rhine flows as the Middle Rhine, German, Middle Rhine, through the Rhine Gorge, a formation created by erosion, which happened at about the same rate as an uplift in the region, leaving the river at about its original level, and the surrounding lands raised. The gorge in the upper Middle Rhine is quite deep about 130 meters, 430 feet, from the top of the rocks, down to the average water line. The average width of the entire Rhine is 400 meters, 1300 feet, but in the Rhine Gorge it narrows to just over 150 meters, 500 feet. The Upper Middle Rhine is also known as the Romantic Rhine and the Rhine Gorge. The Upper Middle Rhine from the confluence of the Moselle upstream at Koblenz at kilometers 591 to Bingen at kilometers 527 is actually a very short segment of the Rhine, being only 64 kilometers, out of a total length of 1,083 kilometers. It is this section of the Romantic Rhine or Rhine Gorge that draws far more attention of the tourists than any other. The Upper Middle Rhine Valley, or Rhine Gorge, was added to the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites in 2002 for its unique combination of geological, historical, cultural and industrial reasons. Right Bank versus Left Bank? The right bank or left bank of a river is the bank as seen looking downstream. On a ship or boat, the starboard is the right side in the direction the boat is traveling that is, looking towards the bow, and port is the left side. 
The Romantic Rhine and the Robber Barons. The Upper Middle Rhine region is world famous for its natural beauty and many castles in a 105 kilometers or 65 mile stretch there are some 40 castles, many of them now in ruins. Most of the castles in the Middle Rhine Valley were constructed between 1250 and 1350. For defensive purposes, they were usually built on the metal terraces that were created during the formation of the valley. The castles were often highlighted by bright colors and had high towers, making them a clear sign of strong rule by their owners, and visible from a great distance. This region now has an aura of romance and beauty. However, it has a drearier and more menacing past. The many castles in this region were never intended to be palatial residences for the nobility, or very wealthy. Instead they had a somewhat darker history. Being built as fortresses for dominance, defense, and most importantly, for the exaction of tolls on the river traffic below. They were built to dominate the surround cities and territory, and for defense in time of attack. Most importantly, they served as a toll castle, or Zalberg, for collecting tolls on the river traffic below. During the time when these castles were built and in operation, Germany was not a united country as we know it today. That happened as recently as 1871, at the conclusion of the Franco-Prussian War. In the Middle Ages what was to become Germany was part of the so-called Holy Roman Empire, a loose collection, or confederation of various states, some large such as Prussia and Bavaria, and some very small, such as just cities. These states were ruled by various strata of nobility, kings, princes, dukes, etc. And some were ecclesiastical properties ruled by archbishops. At one time there were about 350 of these states within the confines of present-day Germany. With an especially high concentration in the Middle Rhine region, the rulers of these states needed money, and a lucrative source of revenue was the exaction of tolls on traffic on the Rhine. At Mainz the Rhine is 520 meters wide, but in much of the Middle Rhine region from Bingen to Koblenz, the river is in a narrow gorge, in places just 150 meters wide. This made it easy to control passage on the river, and attempts to bypass the river by portage on land was very difficult and dangerous in many cases. The width of the river required that castles be located opposite each other across the river, in order to maintain control. During the Middle Ages travel by land was very difficult and dangerous. So the Rhine was an important trading route, and the major commercial thoroughfare in Western Europe. Rhine customs and tolls were a major source of revenue for the Holy Roman Empire. As such, the emperors closely guarded the right to collect tolls. Such a right could be granted only by the emperor. During the time when the emperor was in firm control, the various rulers along the Rhine received permission to levy tolls, often in exchange for a monetary payment or political favors in these cases. There was some regulation of the tolls charged. There were many cases of renegade rulers charging excessive tolls, especially during the time when imperial control was weak or absent. This was especially the case when there was no emperor, as from 1250 to 1273, when the number of tolling stations quadrupled, from 12 to almost 50. The term, robber baron, dates back to the 12th and 13th centuries, and originally referred to the feudal lords in the region of the Rhine River, who abused their position by stopping passing merchant ships and demanding exorbitant tolls without being authorized to do so. These robber barons built castles along the Rhine and started to levy their own illegal tolls, sometimes stretching iron chains across the river.
the levying of tolls on the Rhine continued for 1,000 years. From around 800 to 1815 when all tolls were abolished. During this period, there were 79 different locations that, at one time or another, served as toll collecting points along the entire Rhine. In addition to excessive tolls, sometimes there was outright theft of boats and cargo in either case. These rulers were the original robber barons, a term later applied in the late 19th century. To such figures in the U.S. as John D. Rockefeller, J. Gould, J. P. Morgan, Cornelius Vanderbilt, and Andrew Carnegie. However, these modern-day robber barons, however avaricious, were really neither barons or robbers. They all came from humble beginnings, and were not recipients of any inherited wealth or titles of nobility. Nor were they really robbers in the sense of illegally acquiring wealth or property. In fact, they did do some good in organizing industry, making it more efficient, and providing much-needed goods and services. In contrast, the earlier-day robber barons of the Rhine Valley exacted heavy tolls, and in some cases actually stole goods, and even entire ships from the merchants in one case. The Baron of Reitberg in 1254 kidnapped the Queen of Holland from her ship. The large number of toll stations, about every 5 or 10 kilometers in some stretches of the river, and the onerous tolls, gave rise to efforts to control the situation. A notorious example is that of Volsker Fenstein Castle, built on an island by King Ludwig the Fourth of Bavaria in 1326, as a way to collect tolls from trading ships traveling along the Rhine. These excesses, precipitated especially by the outrage over the kidnapping of the Queen of Holland, led to the formation of the Rhinish Airbund, the League of the Rhine in 1254. The League of the Rhine was a cooperative venture with cities, princess and knights as members. They freed the queen from Reitberg Castle in 1255, deposed four of the robber barons, and closed ten of the toll castles. The League collapsed just three years later in 1257. The robber barons proliferated again, and river traffic decreased once more. Although efforts were made to curb the excesses, the tolls continued for the next 500 years. It was not until the Congress of Vienna in 1815 that all tolls on the Rhine were abolished. Over the years, the various wars that swept through the region resulted in the destruction of many of the castles. A major factor was the introduction of gunpowder and the cannon, especially after 1350s which rendered the castle walls and fortifications less formidable, and they lost much of their importance. During the 17th century, the Middle Rhine was increasingly the scene of a long-lasting conflict between Germany and France. The ravages of the Thirty Years' War, 1618-1648, destroyed many of the castles and surrounding countryside. The Kingdom of France especially under King Louis XIV was interested in territorial expansion eastward to the Rhine in doing so. The French armies destroyed many of the castles during the War of Palatine succession of 1688 to 1692. Only the high castles of Marxburg, Festung Ehrenbreitstein, and Bergrheinfels were spared. Of these, only Marxburg, above the village of Brabeck was left completely intact? After the final defeat of Napoleon, and the subsequent Congress of Vienna in 1815, all of the approximately 200 toll stations along the Rhine were abolished. The principle of free navigation on the Rhine that was agreed upon by the Congress of Vienna in 1815 resulted in the establishment of the Central Commission for the Navigation of the Rhine in 1918. Navigation of the Rhine became freely open to ships of all countries. Romanticism, also known as the Romantic Era, was an artistic, literary, 
musical and intellectual movement that originated in Europe toward the end of the 18th century, and in most areas was at its peak in the period from about 1800 to 1850. One of the important aspects of Romanticism was the appreciation of the beauty of nature and the emotional extolment of the past eras. Rhine Romanticism was the appreciation of natural beauty and history of the Rhine Valley. It was dominant from end of the 18th century until the late 19th century, and found expression in painting, prose and poetry, and later in photography. With the advent of Rhine Romanticism after 18-15, many castles were rebuilt with Berg Rheinstein in Trechtingshausen being the first castle to be rebuilt in the 19th century. Ever since ancient times people have traveled through the Rhine Valley, with little or no appreciation of its natural beauty, having more pressing issues at mind, such as crushing poverty or simply survival. The treacherous region of the Rhine Rapids near the Lorelei was not a time for reflection on the natural beauty but rather a struggle to simply have safe passage through life-threatening rapids. With the beginning of the Romanticism movement, people began to have greater appreciation of the beauties of nature, and in particular the Rhine Valley. The era of Rhine Romanticism can be said to have begun in 1801, when Clemens Brentano created the most famous of the Rhine myths. The story of the beautiful and sad enchantress Lorelei when he published his Ballad at Bacharach on the Rhine. Artists, such as Christian Georg Schutz, the Younger, and William Turner, painted scenes of rugged, wild Rhine landscapes, with solitary ruined castles perched on steep cliffs. British visitors, such as the artist William Turner and writer Lord Byron, were also early 19th century visitors to the Rhine as were British aristocrats on the grand tour of Europe. This is a quotation from Lord Byron about the Rhine. This is a painting of views of the Rhine by William Tomlinson, 1840, of the ruins of the Werner Chapel at Bakuriak. This is St. Gore with bird cats, an engraving by Ward, after Tomlinson. The most popular romantic Rhine views the reproductions in varying formats, such as postcard spreads were derived from Nikolai von Astodin. This is Velmet with Bergmaus. Regular steamboat service was introduced in 1827, and by the 1850s about one million visitors each year were enjoying the scenery from a steam vessel. Princess and wealthy individuals began to rebuild the castles, especially after 1815. Foremost among these were members of the Prussian Royal House, which built at several locations. A notable example is Stolzenfels Castle near Koblenz, rebuilt in the period 1836 to 1842 by King Frederick William IV of Prussia. A significant part of the Rhine Romanticism is the legend of the Lorelei. The Lorelei is a large rock or hill on the right bank at a narrows of the Rhine River, near St. Gores Hazen. The Lorelei is 132 meters, 433 feet, high, steep slate rock on the right bank of the River Rhine in the Rhine Gorge, or Middle Rhine, at St. Gores Hazen. This is a view of the Rhine, as seen from the Lorelei. This is a sign on the bank of the Rhine. The Lorelei produces an echo, and is associated with the legend of a beautiful maiden who threw herself into the Rhine in despair over a faithless lover. The Lorelei was then transformed into a siren who lured fishermen to destruction. This legend was created by an 1801 by Clemens Brentano, who published it in his Ballad to Bakker on the Rhine. In 1824, Heinrich Heine adapted Brentano's story in one of his most famous poems, De Lorelei. The poem, De Lorelei, describes Lorelei as a sort of siren who, sitting on the cliff above the Rhine distracted shipmen with her beauty and song, 
causing them to crash on the rocks. This is the Lorelei poem by Heinrich Heine. In 1837 Heine's lyrics were set to music by Friedrich Silcher in the Lorelei song that became well known in German-speaking lands. This is an English translation of the Lorelei poem by Heinrich Heine. We will next have a short video clip of the Lorelei by Philip Friedrich Silha. 1 minute 25 seconds In the Upper Middle Rhine, there are 40 castles in 105 kilometers, or 65 miles. With a few exceptions, the castles in the Middle Rhine Valley were constructed between the 12th century and the first half of the 14th century. They were usually built on the middle terraces that were created during the formation of the valley. Initially, the castles served to secure territory in the late 12th century. The princess discovered customs revenue as a source of income, and some castles were built to control customs. Castles were also built outside cities to limit the aspirations to freedom of the city dwellers. This region from Bingen downstream to Koblenz is where most of the castles are to be found. This map shows the location of the many castles in the Upper Middle Rhine region from Bingen downstream to Bonn. This more detailed map shows the location of castles in the Upper Middle Rhine region between Bingen and St. Gore. Klopp Castle is at the upstream end of the Middle Rhine on an earlier Roman fortification. The castle's name dates to 1282, even though castle structures on the site are even older. Klopp Castle went under major reconstruction twice in the past two centuries. The second time to repair damage caused by World War II bombing. Klopp Castle is a landmark of Bingen and contains a local history museum with artifacts dating back to Roman times. Ehrenfels Castle, in German, Berg Ehrenfels, is a ruined castle near Rudesheim on the steep eastern bank of the river amid extended vineyards. The grape variety Ehrenfelser is named after the castle. Ehrenfels Castle was built about 1212, at the behest of the Archbishop of Mainz, with a customs post controlling the shipping on the Rhine, supplemented by the mouse tower below at the river. The castle was finally devastated by French troops in 1689. This is Binger Lock, the southern gateway to the gorge. On the left is the Mouse Tower, and on the right is Berg Ehrenfels, kilometers 530. Reichenstein Castle, in German, Berg Reichenstein, also known as Falkenberg, is above the town of Trechtingshausen. Reichenstein Castle represents an excellent example of Rhine Romanticism. The castle's earliest fortifications date to the 11th century. Over the centuries, Reichenstein was destroyed and rebuilt at least three times, 
and the castle's 19th century architecture is based on the English New Gothic style. Berg Reichenstein was the first castle to be rebuilt in the 19th century. Sunak Castle, in German, Ur Sunak, is near the village of Niederheimbach between Bingen and Bakuriak. This is Sunak Castle. Stalag Castle is a 12th century fortified castle on a crag 160 meters, 520 feet, above sea level on the left bank of the Rhine and offers a commanding view of the Lorelei Valley. The name Stalag Castle means impregnable castle on a crag, from the Middle High German words for steel stall and Eke Crag. Stalag was built on the orders of the Archbishop of Cologne and was destroyed in the late 17th century, rebuilt in the 20th, and is now hostile. Falzgrafenstein Castle, German, Berg Falzgrafenstein, is a toll castle on the Falkenau Island, otherwise known as Fals Island in the Rhine River near Kaub. This is Berg Falzgrafenstein at Kaub, and in the background is Berg Gutenfels, known as the Fels. This former stronghold is famous for its picturesque and unique setting. Schönberg Castle was first mentioned between the years 911 and 1166. From the 12th century, the Dukes of Schönberg ruled over the town of Oberwessel and had also the right to levy customs on the Rhine. The castle was burned down in 1689 by French soldiers during the Palatinate Wars. Since 1957, the Huddle family has been living at the castle and operate a hotel and restaurant. This is the Middle Rhine Valley near Obervessel. This is the Lorelei. This is the statue of Lorelei along the Rhine, just below the Lorelei Hill. This is Bergkatz, St. Gorishausen, and the Lorelei. This is a view from the Lorelei. Mouse Castle, in German, Bergmaus, meaning Mouse Castle, is on the east side of the Rhine. North of Kat Castle, Kat Castle, in St. Gorishausen, and opposite Rheinfels Castle at St. Gor across the river. Kat Castle, in German, Bergkatz, is above the German town of St. Gorishausen. It was first built around 1371 by Count William II of Katz and Nellenbogen. Katz Castle was bombarded in 1806 by Napoleon and rebuilt in 1896 to 1898. Rheinfels Castle, in German, Berg Rheinfels, is a ruin located above the left west bank of the Rhine in St. Gore. Rheinfels Castle was started in 1245 by Count Dieter the fifth of Katzenelnbogen. After expansions, it was the largest fortress in the Middle Rhine Valley between Koblenz and Mainz. Rheinfels Castle was attacked by French Revolutionary Army troops in 1797. It is the largest castle overlooking the Rhine, and once covered five times its current area. This shows the location of castles in the Upper Middle Rhine between Mouse Castle at kilometers 554 and downstream beyond Koblenz to kilometers 608. The Sternberg and Liebenstein castles are known as the Hostel Brothers because of the feuds between the descendants of the castles. This is the Sternberg Castle. And this is the Liebenstein Castle. This is Bopart on the left bank of the Rhine, 20 kilometers, 12 miles, upstream from Koblenz. Bopart is an ancient settlement dating from Celtic and Roman times. Bopart is now a major tourist town of 16,000 population. The cable car, Cecilbon, of Bopart is 915 meters long. Ascends 232 meters and offers great views of the Rhine Valley below. Directly north of Baupard, the Rhine takes its greatest bend. This bow is called the Bopard or Ham, 
although this name is more commonly applied to the wine growing area found along it. The best known lookout point over this bow in the Rhine is the Fierce Enblick, or for Lake View. At this vista, hills block out most of the view of the river, so visitors see four apparently separate patches of water, rather like four lakes. The Marksburg is a castle above Brabeck and is one of the most important sites of the Rhine Gorge UNESCO World Heritage Site. Marksburg Castle is the only hilltop castle in the Middle Rhine Valley that was never destroyed. Stolzenfels Castle, in German, Schloss Stolzenfels, is a former medieval fortress castle, Berg, turned into a palace. Near Koblenz on the left bank of the Rhine, and it represents the epitome of the Rhine Romanticism. Stolzenfels was given to the Prussian crown prince, Frederick William in 1823. He had it rebuilt as a 19th century palace in Gothic Revival style. Ehrenbreitstein Fortress, in German, Festung Ehrenbreitstein, is on the east bank of the Rhine across from Koblenz. Ehrenbreitstein occupies the place of an earlier fortress destroyed by the French in 1801. It was built as a key point of the regional fortification system by Prussia between 1817 and 1828. However, this Prussian fortress was never attacked. This is the Rhine Cable Railway that goes Koblenz across the Rhine to Ehrenbreitstein. This is the Deutsche Sek, German corner, at the confluence of the Rhine and Moselle rivers. This shows the location of castles in the upper middle Rhine downstream from Koblenz between kilometers 608 and Bad Harnuf at kilometers 639. This shows the location of castles in the upper middle Rhine downstream from Sinsig between kilometers 628 and Bonn at kilometers 654. Marienfels Castle was built in 1859. Marienfels Castle is a magnificent example of Prussian Rhine Romanticism. Drakenberg Castle near Königswinter was constructed in 1885. Drakenberg suffered major damage in World War II, but has been restored to its previous splendor. The unexpected capture of the Ludendorff Bridge at Remagen over the Rhine likely shortened World War II in Europe. After capturing the Siegfried Line, the 9th Armored Division of the U.S. First Army had advanced unexpectedly quickly towards the Rhine. They were very surprised to see one of the last bridges across the Rhine still standing at Remagen. The Germans had wired the bridge with about 2,800 kilograms, 6,200 pounds, of demolition charges. When they tried to blow it up, only a portion of the explosives detonated. U.S. forces captured the bridge and rapidly expanded their first bridgehead across the Rhine, two weeks before Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery's meticulously planned Operation Plunder. This is an aerial view of the Ludendorff Bridge after it collapsed on March 17, 1945. Two treadway pontoon bridges are visible to the north. The U.S. Army actions prevented the Germans from regrouping east of the Rhine and consolidating their positions. The Peace Museum is located in the towers of the Remagen Bridge. Steamships were introduced on the Rhine from about 1830, and railway lines were constructed from 1857. Neither innovation led to industrialization in the narrow Rhine Valley. River cruises on the Rhine soon became popular. An early company is the Köln Düsseldorfer Deutsche Rhine Schifffahrt, or KD Line, founded in 1826 and still operating today with 14 cruise ships, mainly offering day cruises. The KD Line operates a total of 14 cruise ships on the Rhine, Main, and Moselle rivers. The SS Gady began service on the Rhine in 1913 and still operates as the largest side paddle steamer in the world today over 100 years later. This shows the various parts of call on the Rhine and Moselle of the KD line. In 2000, 
The KD line was purchased by Viking Cruises, making it a subsidiary of the largest river cruise line in the world. The Rhine Gorge has its own microclimate. It has types of grapes not found in other places this far north. Indeed, the German wine regions are some of the most northerly in the world. The slopes have long been terraced for agriculture, and in particular for viticulture on the south-facing slopes. The vineyards are often extremely steep, so they catch the most sunlight, and as a result are difficult to harvest mechanically. The vineyards are usually very small, and the production of wine is very limited. Most of the vineyards belong to the Middle Rhine and Moselle wine regions, but the southernmost parts of the Rhine Gorge are in the Rheingau and Nahe regions. This shows the Middle Rhine and Moselle wine regions. This is the Rheingau vineyard region, and we see that the vineyards are on the south facing slopes of the Rhine Valley, which in this region are mostly in an east to west direction. The mountain range of the town is to the north also provides protection against the cold north winds. The Rhine serves as humidity and heat storage to provide relatively uniform temperatures without extremes and ideal conditions for viticulture. The Rheingau region extends for approximately 30 kilometers, 19 miles, from Hochheim in the east to Ismanshausen in the west. It is one of the oldest and best-known wine-growing regions in Germany, with the Riesling grape currently dominant. Note that the region is on the south-facing slopes of the valley, in the region where the Rhine flows in a generally east-west direction. As late as 1900, viticulture dominated the economic structure of the Middle Rhine, with its small cities and agriculture. Middle Rhine, or Middle Rhine, is a region for quality wine in Germany, and is located along a 120 km stretch of the river. This is the home of the Riesling grape which grows on steeply terraced vineyards. The Riesling wine results are fruity wines that come from the poor shale in which they are grown. This is Rudesheim with Bergeren Fels in the foreground. This is the upper middle Rhine region between Bingen at kilometers 526 and St. Gore at kilometers 555. This includes the Lorelei region around kilometers 556. This is the upper middle Rhine region around Bingen and Rudesheim near kilometers 526. This shows Bingen on the left bank of the Rhine and Rudesheim on the right bank. This is a map of Rudesheim. This is a map of the tourist part of Rudesheim. These are points of interest in Rudesheim. This shows the location of points of interest in Rudesheim. Drosselgasse in Rudesheim is only 2 meters wide and 144 meters long. When Drosselgasse was first mentioned in the 15th century it was a quarter for sailors who would carry their oars. Sails and rigging back to their apartments through narrow passageways and leave their stripped boats moored on the water. Today Drosselgasse is a quaint street, lined with half-timbered souvenir shops, artisan specialty shops, and wine taverns. This shows the location of shops on Drosselgasse. The Niederwald Monument commemorates the unification of Germany after the defeat of France in the Franco-Prussian War of 1871. This is a map of Rudesheim, showing the location of the Niederwald Monument. This immense monument was unveiled in 1883. It has the allegorical figure of Germania on her throne, with the Holy Roman crown in her right hand, and the imperial sword in her left. Beneath Germania is a relief of Kaiser Wilhelm the I, on horseback along with military leaders, soldiers and members of the nobility. This is the view from the Niederwald monument looking toward the Rhine. A cable car from Oberstrasse in Rudesheim goes up to the Niederwald monument. It is a 15-minute ride over the old town and the vineyards beside the Rhine. 
Siegfried's mechanical music cabinet has automatic music instruments in many shapes and forms that date from the 18th century to the 20th century. The music instruments range from music boxes to organs on wheels and to a small orchestra of 15 instruments. This is Bergerenfels with Bingen on the other side of the Rhine. Koblenz Koblenz is located at the downstream end of the upper middle Rhine region. Koblenz is on both banks of the Rhine, but the central part and historical district is on the left bank, adjacent to where the Moselle joins the Rhine. Koblenz was established as a Roman military post around 8 BC. The name originates in the Latin, ad confluentes, meaning at the confluence of the two rivers. The actual confluence is today known as the Deutsches Eck or German Corner. The Deutsches Eck has a monumental equestrian statue of Kaiser Wilhelm, the first, the first German emperor in commemoration the unification of Germany that occurred in 1871. This statue of Kaiser Wilhelm, the first, at the Deutsches Eck was erected in 1897. The statue of Kaiser Wilhelm was destroyed in World War II, and only the plinth was preserved as a memorial. Following German reunification, a replica of the statue was erected. The Deutsches Eck is today a Koblenz landmark, and a popular tourist destination. Koblenz has a population of 112,000 making it the third largest city in the Rhineland Palatinate after Mainz and Ludwigshafen. This is a map of the central historic part of Koblenz. This is a map of Rhine, Moselle, Koblenz, and the Ehrenbreitstein fortress across the Rhine from Koblenz. A principal point of interest near Koblenz is the Ehrenbreitstein fortress, in German, Festung Ehrenbreitstein. The fortress is on the peak of the hill, of the same name, 118 meters above the Rhine. It marks the northernmost point of the Upper Middle Rhine Valley UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Ehrenbreitstein Fortress is on the east bank of the Rhine across from Koblenz. Ehrenbreitstein occupies the position of an earlier fortress destroyed by the French in 1801. Ehrenbreitstein was built as part of the regional fortification system, called Festung Koblenz, by Prussia between 1817 and 1828 to guard the Middle Rhine region. This is an area that had been invaded by French troops repeatedly before. The Prussian fortress of Ehrenbreitstein was never attacked. Since 2002, Ehrenbreitstein has been part of the Upper Middle Rhine Valley UNESCO World Heritage Site. As easy and enjoyable way to reach Ehrenbreitstein from Koblenz is by the Koblenz Cable Car, or Zeilborn Koblenz. The Koblenz Cable Car was opened in 2010. It connects the banks of the River Rhine and the Hill Plateau next to Ehrenbreitstein Fortress. The cable car system is 890 meters in length and has an elevation of 112 meters. The Koblenz cable car can take up to 7,600 passengers per hal and therefore has the highest passenger capacity of any cable car in the world. It operates usually between April and October. Guests can enjoy a view of the UNESCO Upper Middle Rhine Valley World Heritage Site from one of the 18 panoramic cars. The cable car's lower station is located within the city on the banks of the Rhine, on the Conrad Adenauer Ufer behind the Basilica of St. Castor, and very close to Deutsche Sec. The upper station is situated very near to the entrance of the Ehrenbreitstein Fortress. The Koblenz Cable Car, Zeilbahn Koblenz. The cable wheel length is 890 meters. The height difference is 112 meters. And the free span over the Rhine is 850 meters. The width of Rhine at this point is 287 meters. There are 18 cabins. The speed is 16 kilometers per hour, or 10 miles per hour. 
The Koblenz cable car has the highest transportation capacity per hour for an aerial cable car in the world. These are cable cars approaching the upper station near the Ehrenbreitstein fortress. The Koblenz cable car has been Germany's biggest aerial tramway since 2010. Climate The climate of Koblenz Will IT be hot or will IT be cold in Koblenz? Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Koblenz. Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Koblenz. The rainfall in Koblenz. Here is the average rainfall in inches throughout the year in Koblenz. The total yearly rainfall is 28 inches, or 570 millimeters. Here is the average rainfall in millimeters throughout the year in Koblenz. Here is the average number of days per month, with precipitation, throughout the year in Koblenz. We see that it rains about 12 days, every month, throughout the year. Recommended Videos Part 4 The Middle Ryan Recommended Videos The Romantic Middle Ryan Recommended Videos The Apam Middle Ryan Valley Recommended Video The Apam Middle Ryan Valley Discover Germany Recommended video, A Pam Middle Ryan Valley, Germany, World Heritage Journeys. Recommended video, De Lorelei. Recommended video, De Lorelei. A German folk song plus an English translation. Table of Contents, Part 4 The Middle Ryan. Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my great videos.